So welcome to another Running On Air video. In this one I'm looking at the Loom 2 editing page. I'll be looking at the functions of the modules as well as the general layout and also put together a sound from the basics up. So let's get on with it. Yeah, so this video is just going to be about the edit page. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so in this section you can get to the various other pages which we're not going to look at today. So here we can control the number of partials per voice and obviously depending on what you choose is going to affect the amount of CPU you're using. The current shows how many are actually being used. Then we have this synced unsynced section. Now I've not managed to work out what this does and there doesn't seem to be any information about it so if you've got any ideas then let me know. It definitely has an effect, but I'm not sure exactly how to describe it. Um, then we have a voicing section. So we've got mono um, and then up to eight voices, which is the maximum. We can then choose what octave it's pitched at, glide time, and then also scales here as well. Now it's got the, the standard one, the tempered scale, but it's also got these natural scales as well based on a key center. How natural they are and exactly how they're tuned, I'm not sure. And also I don't know whether it's possible to add more. It'd be quite nice if you could add some more if there's a particular file type, but I don't have any information about that currently. And then you've got the save and load section here. This is next and last patch, if you just want to kind of scroll through them. Etc. This one though is interesting. Um, it's a random section and there's two modes of it. So one you just press the random button and it generates a whole load of modules um, and then creates some theoretically musical sound out of them. And then if the alternative is if you press the shift key, um, then it will keep the modules you've already got, but just fiddle with the values. So let's try it first of all, keeping. And they are kind of usable. I mean, it would be a good place to start if you just wanted to try something. Now, if we go completely random, it will change the modules as well. I mean, that's genuinely quite usable, but if I press random again, it's gone for good. It's gone. So that's the top row. I think what we need to do is actually have a look at the central section in order to create some sort of context. It's described as modular, which is true, but it seems to me that it's arranged rather like um, a row of guitar effects pedals. So if you start at the top left hand side and then go along in a line and then it comes down and does the same thing on the bottom row. If I actually select the default setting, you'll see that you have some kind of sound generation at the beginning. And then you have what is essentially a VCA at the end. If I turn that off. Yeah, so now I've taken that off. There's no envelope. It's literally just going to play that noise forever. I've got something whistling in this room anyway. Hopefully it's not a hard disk failing. So when you actually start looking at the modules, you're going to be surprised by the number of them and you're going to find yourself thinking, what on earth do they do? Now, one of the things that's really unhelpful about this synthesizer is it doesn't have a manual. But what's actually quite good about the synthesizer is that it's sort of built in. So where you see the eye, it will give you a basic description. For my taste, it doesn't really go deep enough, so I can't fully understand exactly what it's doing. And I've had to make some educated guesses, which of course can be wrong, you know, and I'd rather be right about these things. But what can you do? You can only work with the information you've got. If we look at the modules, this is where it starts to really show how different it is from other types of synthesis. Because 
what is an effect and what is generating sound and what is manipulating sound? These are questions which are fairly clear in the subtractive world and in the FM world. But here, all you're doing is combining sine waves. So the only originating sound, in a sense, is a single sine wave and everything else is created to reference that. So you basically have algorithms or mathematical functions which take your original sine wave and then calculate what other partials and harmonics need to be added to create whatever sound you're trying to work on. A quick thought about the basic modules then. Some of those are there to give you your initial sound. So if we went for the odd even, the sync, the organs, the discrete and the five signs, all of those can be used as a VCO, DCO type thing to start your sound off. The odd even is going to give you things like ramp waves and square waves and various other waveform types. The kind of the basic uh, VCO, but with extreme harmonic shifts, which I showed in one of the earlier videos. Sync is just It's basically the sound of a synced oscillator. So you've got various organ settings there. So we've got the odd even. To adjust things then I'm going to add the second tone. And the idea of this is it's just going to add the information you need to make it sound like there's two oscillators. So I was thinking more of like, uh, let's get them at the same pitch but detune them slightly. And if you notice here actually you can see when you start seeing blue it basically means that the stereo um, is being engaged and that you'll get in um, a different left and right signal. So we've got stereo on, damping. And then we can obviously modulate it as well. I'll try on this one actually. You can hear it's having some kind of effect there. Uh, and then you've got LFO sections here as well. And the last one is things like uh, velocity, modulation, will, and that sort of stuff. And those controls are repeated on every single module. I won't go through all of these. Um, let's just have a quick look at discrete. This is one, it's, is it an effect or is it a generator? Because if you put it at the beginning of the chain, it's a generator. It creates a lot of distinctive sound though. So the random is quite good because what it's doing is it's giving you a different spread of frequencies every time you press a note. So that's just the basic modules. Um, I'm not going to go in any more of them. I think it's, you know, some of them are fairly easy to work out what they do. Let's have a look at some of the others. The filter modules are pretty good and if you push the parameters into the extremes you'll start getting things which you can't really get on a subtractive synth. So that's really worth exploring. So there's a few things here which you don't see on other synths. I'm going to go for the moving filter. Make it a little bit more subtle by changing that. That's quite nice. So let's see what else there is. Oh, there's quite a few. So detuned. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? That's a good way to get that detuned sound. I think that's better than the second tone. Yeah, and you have the moving filter before it as well. Let's stick another moving filter in there and see what it sounds like. I do like the sound of this thing.
Okay, we don't have enough solar phasing sound, so let's put a phaser on. Yeah, okay. It doesn't take too long to get some interesting sounds. Rhythmic modules, phrase, drop, random drops. Now th this phrase unit is essentially an arpeggiator. I mean, but a bit more complicated, should we say. I know it becomes more difficult to actually hear what each one is doing as you add things on, but it'd be kind of nice to get a cool sound at the end of this. Now I'm going to add the tail. Definitely had something. I'm not too sure exactly what it is. Uh, I think I'd have to do a bit more experimenting. Let's try something else. Um, add a. <laughs> really, quite a lot you can do with that. Um, I really feel that like I've only just scratched the surface. It's quite difficult to know exactly what's going on. The explanations are there. I think there's probably enough of an explanation to give you some idea of how to start programming, but it doesn't really give you much of an insight into exactly what it's doing, uh, which is I find a little frustrating. OK, so I'm going to have a look at some of the other features that are here. So we've, we've had a look at the modules, not comprehensively, unfortunately, but we've had a good sort of sample selection of them to get some idea of what's going on. Now, I'm going to have a look at this side panel here. So first of all, let's have a look at the spectral distortion. Now, we've got a lot of options here. OK, I'm just going to leave it on random all. It's almost like the uh, ring modulation of this synth. Uh, spectral modulation. OK, let's... I think this is a little bit like the spectral distortion, but with its own dedicated LFO. So let's just try that out. So you, you can definitely get some wacky vibratos out of this. In this sound, you can hear the upper harmonics are, have got vibrato on them, but the lower ones don't. So you vibrato on everything. Now just the higher sounds. Now the noise. So obviously adding noise to the signal and you can damp it to make it more pink in nature.
And then this last module is really the simplest one to understand. It's basically um, sub oscillators. That's weird. I can't hear those subs at the moment, but they used to work. Um, they do work most of the time. So maybe it's something to do with everything else that I've got whacked on top here. Well, that's interesting. So the discrete was actually filtering that out. I'm not going to go through the effects. I mean, there's nothing majorly surprising about any of that, really. Um, but it's good to have it there quite clearly. There's so much more you could do with this, I'm pretty certain. And I'm going to keep exploring it. Plus, I'm going to look at those other edit pages as well, because I think that then takes it to a different level altogether. And that's what I'll be looking at in the next video. If you want to see that, then please consider subscribing, leave a like, all of that sort of stuff. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully it's of use and hopefully catch you on the next video. Thanks again. Bye.